Welcome to the Prog Talks by the Prog Space. Welcome to the Prog Talks, an interview series by the Prog Space, where we will be talking to musicians in all corners of the progressive music scene. Welcome back to the Prog Talks. I'm your host, Dario. And as always, before we jump into today's topic and welcome to today's guest, um, please don't forget to get us a cup of tea or coffee. It helps us out a lot. It's very much appreciated. And uh, now without further ado, um, I want to welcome Teddy uh, from Gerald, uh, calling from France. Hi, Teddy. How are you doing today? And I'm good. Nice to meet you. How are you? I'm I'm good as well, thank you, and uh, I'm I'm actually very excited to have you on the Proc Talks as I have had the pleasure of listening to the upcoming debut album from the band Gerald, uh, which is called The Lost Tapes, and it's, it's out on May nineteenth. I had I've had the pleasure to 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 have a, a stream or advanced uh, promo download for a couple of weeks now, and I've been listening to it a lot. And I first time I heard it, I was I, I think it was it's 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 safe to say that it was the most jaw dropping musical moment of this year so far for me. Wow. Um, <laughs> it's a pleasure to hear it. Thanks. So I'm I'm very eager to hear uh, a little bit of background information about Gerald and the Lost Tapes. So maybe to start uh, to start it off, who or what is Gerald <laughs> or <Okay>. Gerald? <laughs> Before, do you mind if I smoke? Is no worries, problem? that's okay. Yeah, thank you. It's not it's 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 not a um, like kids friendly show. You, you're okay, all, you're I've, also I've got loads of things to do then. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the question was, you said, what is Gerald? Yeah, yes. that the, I think like the more that we play together and the more stuff we do, whether it be music or film, I still don't think we have any clear idea of what the project is. <laughs> it, it may sound really stupid, but I think it's more like a way of doing things. Like, I mean, we started off with the specific intention just to, uh, just to see what we could actually say to each other with our instruments, like to see what we had to offer, like as a, as a weird sort of like first primal scream or cry to the world, just to give, just to give something at first. And um, the more we rehearsed, the more we played, it just became more and more clear that like, it's very instrumental music, which is also due to the fact that we're lazy and that we probably can't sing very well. But, um, <laughs> oh no, no. That being said, we have made some efforts, I think, to sing. But um, in the like over the last few years, we have been just spending so much time rehearsing just to see what we can actually make of those moments together. I don't know if it makes much sense, but um, I don't know what the project is. I think if we knew what the project is, it wouldn't be as exciting or sexy. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think like for to give an easy answer would be okay. Just five five people who don't really like their jobs and who have a concrete idea of what they want to do, which is nothing but with instruments and which is always an interesting uh, <laughs> way to do it. <laughs> nothing and, 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 and uh, yet you create a whole world. Um, yeah, th there's a, there's a first, uh, first release uh, already out for a couple of years, the church, church of the sublime parade. EP yeah. dem demo album from 2018 that was that was entirely instrumental I think and um comparing it to the lost tapes I I have the feeling that uh not only is there more vocals um but also there's a lot more piano uh, I think on the lost tapes uh, I had the feeling that the piano is a very very um has a very central role plays a central role in the music. Um, so, so maybe you can tell us a little bit about the, the, um, the, the lineup, the, the, of the band, uh, what, what kind of people, uh, are involved, what kind of instruments and, uh, how maybe this, the, the, um, tonal focus or whatever 
might have changed between the first release and now the lost tapes? Okay, so the first first question is who consists in the actual lineup, yeah? Yes. There's um, Mahan, who is the keyboard player. He's the youngest member of the group, and I'll get to his story a bit later, but um, he joined Gerald like a couple of, maybe a year after the project was initially founded. Um, before he arrived, we were essentially a trio with our old bass player, Thomas, who left the group last year. And all of the songs that are recorded on the Church of the Sublime Parade were like existed before his before his arrival. And so after Maha, we have Marvin. Marvin is the person with whom I founded the project in like late 2016, I think. He plays the guitar and all weird things that you can do with the guitar. I think he's quite uh, on par with the weird stuff. And after that, we have Quentin. Sorry for the French names. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. I like French. <laughs> Quentin. <laughs> okay, exactly. He, um, he plays bass in this project, but his initial instrument is the guitar. I, uh, he joined the group last year when our bass player left. But um, I didn't even know that he played bass. He just said to me, I want to try. <laughs> I said, okay, you can try if you write the whole bass lines for all of the songs. And like the next three days, he sent me a message saying, here, here's the stuff. Let me play. So, okay, okay, you can try. <laughs> but yeah, and so apart from that, there's me on the drums and percussions and noise box as well. We have a, a very funky noise box that we use in concert. So yeah, that's the uh, that's the current lineup, and the fifth member is Vincent. Vincent is our projectionist because we use film when we play in concert. Great. Um, so so the the reason that there's more piano stuff on the new album it's just uh, down to the fact that. Um, who was it? Uh, Marin only joined uh, after all the songs for the Church of the Sublime Parade were done. If, if like, if you like, um, Marin, I first called Marin when our bass player initially left the first time in 2017. He said like he he couldn't deal with the idea of rehearsing so much and playing stuff that required so much energy. So he left once. So I phoned Mahan because I'd met him only very recently then. And I asked him if he would uh, play the bass lines on like the bass tracks on, on his keyboard. So on one side of his keyboard, he like he split it in two. So on the left hand side he had the bass going, and on the right hand side he was just like covering with eerie type of soundscapes. There's there's actually another uh, French band that does this, uh, Lazuli. Yes, Lazuli. <laughs> I it, um, wait a minute. I'm going to disappear for two seconds. There we go. And yeah, so when Maha arrived, he initially came like to replace the bass. So, which also explains why the use of like the electric piano is not as present in the first album because he was mainly preoccupied by like atmospheric stuff and just generating these whole soundscapes and essentially following the guitar in harmony, which is why it's hard to distinguish sometimes. I mean, even when we used to do concerts, people were never really too sure where the sounds were coming from. Mm -hmm. I mean, they weren't coming from me, but they were either coming from like one guy over there or the other one over the other side. So um, yeah. And what explains the piano is that um, we've just been, well, we rehearsed more. And Mahan is of a classical, Ear, and he he's a classically trained musician. So he went to a, a conservatory. I don't know what the English word is for conservatory, but he went to a music school and he's been playing since the age of three and comes from a family background where people do listen to Bach and things that aren't noisy. <laughs> <laughs> things that aren't noisy. I think I read in your biography that like in the biography, band biography, that 
that you like all things noisy. <laughs> that was prob probably from you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you, you mentioned you mentioned the energy when 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 you said that the bass player, the, your your, your uh, um, the, the other the other bass player left for the first time. Um, yeah. I, I have the feeling it's. Uh, I mean, there's there's a lot of influences, of, of course. From from noisy things, be be it jazz or rock or I don't know even even uh, some avant garde punk influences whatever. But but this energy, which is uh, um, quite rare in the, in a prog context, I would say. Um, Gerald is not 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 a, a typical prog band anyway. But um, mm -hmm. it I, I I'm sure a lot of uh, prog fans uh, will. Uh, enjoy the music that Gerald does um but there's there's something um a, a lot of like like most of the prog music is very very organized very very composed uh through and i had the feeling in Gerald there's a there's a, a, a an a punky energy that is mm -hmm. that is chaotic and um that is very very rare in this kind of music uh, would you would you agree to that It got, that makes so much sense. <laughs> it makes sense like on all of the levels possible on like for something that to make sense. Um, it makes sense in we don't write our musical pieces because A, we're thoroughly against the idea of writing the pieces and B, because we're lazy. And um, the punk ethos thing is something that I think I like to bring into the group and with Marvin I mean we started off as a like just playing the two of us in his bedroom and it was just raw condensed and savage honestly it was really really savage <laughs> and the energy that comes out of the songs is just due to four people I, I exclude Vincent from the four people because he doesn't play a musical instrument um, this energy literally just came from being condensed together, like one on each other, one on the other for four years. I mean, we, we rehearsed like four or five times a week for three years. And that, if it doesn't create uh, like an incapacity to talk to someone, it creates literally just so much in common. You see what I mean? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and, and sorry. Yeah, yeah go on. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, like the prog groups that um, it's undeniable. We can't lie about it. We do listen to prog, probably too much prog at some point. So I you. think, yeah, <laughs> isn't your isn't your isn't your show called Prog Tracks? <laughs> yeah, Prog Talks. <laughs> prog Talks, even better. <laughs> But um, like I think when I like for me in any case, when I first started listening to prog, I started off. Like the gateway into Prague was uh, Way Out of Here by Porcupine Tree. And then a bit after it became Tool with Lateralis. And then it became King Crimson, Gentle Giant. It became like, like the mapping just started getting bigger and bigger and bigger of things to explore. And I think what it actually meant to me was, okay, it's it means that like the gates are open. We can spend time exploring to see where we have to go or where we can go, not where we have to go. And uh, like groups like Yes, or Griffon, Griffin, or all the 80s, Marillion or Italian prog, that stuff doesn't really appeal to me. But I think the group that we listen to the most would be King Crimson. For what it means in terms of dissonance, eternal music, and just the, it, they do have a punk ethos. I mean, there's no point lying about it. Uh, very like, high standing intellectual punks, of course, but uh, Even Miles Davis had that sort of way about him. And the crossover genres, like, uh, you know, Cardiacs, the English group from the yeah. 80s, they have, like, I think, Tim Smith, who passed away, he, like, never uh, assimilate or affiliate himself with the prog genre. But it's in there anyway. You can hear it. Um, <laughs> uh, yes. So to condense all of what I just said, I think it just means to just go forth and... Okay, that exists. That exists. These are all the spheres that are possible. So, uh, but we all listen, we all listen to completely different genres. Like I, I, I like the Buggles up to uh, I don't know any weird avant-garde music that exists. Even weird isn't the good term, but just anything that makes noise. Like, 
just anything all the time, all day long, trucks, people talking, that, that anything that makes sound. <laughs> so I, I think it sounds quite cliche probably to say that, but Marvin, on the other hand, listens to a lot more like Melvin's type of music. Marvin originated from the grunge scene. Or he, mm-hmm. like, he grew up with grunge and we met on one album that Tool made, which was Undertow which was like their first album slightly moving away from the heavy metal grunge period going into the like abstract and very deconstructed and constructed music. And Mahan listens to a lot of classical music and a lot of electronic music. Yeah, but, but this, this, um, this, yeah, as you just said, Tool is very much constructed music. Um yes. Very, and, very, and very. so 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 it is um kind of the opposite of what Gerald is well that's because <laughs> we, yeah i i think it's because we were never really able to do a tool cover correctly <laughs> <laughs> i remember like we we still practice we, 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 when when we get together we still play songs like schism or vicarious or um what's the song that we always practice Ticks and Leeches. I mean, that one for the drumming is excellent. But uh, yeah, I think the more we try to go move forward to playing stuff like Tool or even Porcupine Tree or even Stephen Wilson's career as a solo artist, that like we, the further we try to get near that, the more we moved away from it. Ah. Uh. Yeah. It's like there's no point trying to imitate that if it doesn't mean anything in like a visceral way or a very gut-wrenching way. And there's always a difference between what people think of us when they listen to a CD and to what actually happens in concert. In concert, you've got this very raw, like proto-punky stuff. And on the other side, on the album, the first album that you mentioned, Church on the Sublime Parade, that was recorded by a guy from Gong, the old French... Uh, space rock progressive jazz fusion group and we realized that from what he recorded which was recorded in marvin's old attic in the old house that he used to have um he transformed that recording into some like quite mellow rock album with a lot of fusion influences Mm -hmm. in terms of sound i mean yeah so there's always that like the dichotomy between okay the live band is noisy cruel and actually quite violent and the albums are always a tad softer <laughs> well, not always because we've only done one it's not, but uh the one that we made this time was recorded by marvin him like we did the recording and marvin mixed and mastered the album himself so it's closer i think to the ethos yeah and 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 it it, it is i think it's also more more diverse and um Yeah, the the two part closing track Waterfront, especially um, what that 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 was the one uh, that caught me absolutely off guard. That that was probably the moment that I that I mentioned uh, at the beginning of uh, this episode. Um, and that, that, there was so so much going on over the course of the album uh, in terms of uh, craziness, uh, be it from the on, on the piano or on the drums. And then, then you suddenly end up in something so ethereal and just mm-hmm. beautiful. <laughs> and I was actually sitting here on my desk, and I was I started to cry because I was, where did wow. this come from? I didn't <laughs> expect it at all. And and that was the moment when I said when I said to myself, well, this there's nothing that uh, had this effect on me so far this year. So. I, I I cannot uh, help but attribute my personal album of the year to it at this point. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, I don't think you really like I don't think you know how much that means. Like what you've just said is the main reason why like playing in front of people or for people is just obvious. Uh, yeah, because of that, of, I, I can't. I can't uh, uh, it, the 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 upcoming tour is can't come quickly enough. Uh, as you you're gonna <laughs> stop in Munich as well. I really yep. can't wait to see you live. Um, 
just for 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 the listeners uh here it, i think of course you can you can only talk so much about music and and describe music um w without um mentioning other bands that might sound like this you all of course you already mentioned some but um i had some some there was some some other bands popping up in my, in my mind especially with waterfront um There's some I, I don't know if it's one of you guys like singing very very beautifully in the and like in a falsetto or or if it's some guest vocals. Well, no, that is um that is Marvin. Oh, uh, that's that's that that is that that part actually um, reminded me a lot of um, um, the Resonance Project. It's uh, two guys, two amazingly talented guys from California, I think. They are also the backing band of this amazing guitarist. Uh, I, I I failed to to grab his name somewhere deep in my brain now. Um, <laughs> and uh, so the Resonance Project would be would be one, and uh, with like a little bit of like like intense spoken words that reminded me a lot of uh, Novena's uh, Prison Walls. Okay, well, Novena. The spoken, the spoken yeah. word is from me. And yeah, the the beginning we all sing. Like all no, Mahan doesn't sing, but Quentin, Marvin, and I we sing on the beginning. The, the chorus. That's where I think I sing with Marvin. Like the two of us, we we actually figured out that we had a very same, very similar uh, voice. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's very hard to distinguish who's actually singing what. <laughs> so we get like this weaving, interesting vibe off of each other. But no, Marvin's the Marvin's the Klaus Nomi of the group. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. And little, yeah, little anecdote. Um, the first time I saw him play, like he was in a he was playing with a project way before um, I started playing with bands. And I remember that I didn't really make much of his guitar playing, but I just remember hearing him sing. I went. Uh, God, what is that? Where is it coming from? Like, what body does he have to produce that sound? And yeah, sorry, the resonance. Okay, I'll, I'll yeah, check a, the resonance. A quick, quick side note about uh, um, vocal craziness. Yeah. Uh, the other night, um, two days ago, I saw um, Norwegian brothers Sturle Dagsland. Sturle is like one of the brothers uh, who is the vocalist of the the two two man project. And he plays with his with his brother, and uh, the project is called after him, Sturla Dugsland, and okay. that is really out of this world stuff that he's producing with his voice. Um, yeah, that was very impressive and disturbing and enlightening at the same time. Uh, going back to Waterfront Act to the the very very last. Um, when you when you feel you get you, you get lifted up to the heavens that is that that's uh, that's kind of a similar effect that uh, the closing track of the debut album from um british band voronoi had on me it was like two yeah. years ago or something and their uh, trio um they're like um yeah s piano synth gentle like without guitars <laughs> okay you're gonna have to send me all of these names okay so i can go and check them out i i i, I will i would love to do that and 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 i'm Great. also really curious what what you what you think of the of that um yeah what i i just mentioned uh that that you are going on a tour through europe um starting on album release date is that correct may 19th um, the album is coming out on the 18th and the tour, well, we embark upon the tour on the 19th. The ah, yeah, time. yeah, right. Right. The, 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 the album is coming out actually on the day this episode drops. Yes. So, so once you finished a listen to this episode, you, you, you know what to do. <laughs> Head over to Spotify or where, wherever. Um, speaking of which, do, do you, I don't think that I've seen that you guys have a band camp page or something. What, what would be the best way to listen to Gerald music? Um, 
You mean apart from coming to see us play? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there, there might be there might be people in the US or somewhere in the world that where it's a little bit hard to to travel so far. <laughs> well, speaking of the speaking of America, we've had two or three radio shows play our stuff. Wow, that's great. Yeah, and especially Waterfront. I mean, people want Waterfront, which is great. Um, we are on Bandcamp. We're on SoundCloud and all the rest of the things. I am Spotify, Deezer, Napster. I mean, who who even thought the Napster still existed? It's still there. Yeah. And even iTunes. But uh, the problem is we're not we haven't got very good references. You know, I mean we like we don't get that many streams because up until now we're still quite an unknown project. So uh, but no, the best way would be come and see us play. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, <laughs> but but there, there, is there is there uh, is there a physical release coming with the album as well that you can uh, order from Bandcamp then? So if, you, you can order it from Bandcamp, or you have to like purchase it through Bandcamp, and then I'll we'll send the uh, we'll yeah. send the physical CD. But wonderful, no, wonderful. Yeah. I'll, I'll have to check uh, and, and and find the Bandcamp page again. Because well, I, I'll I, send you a CD. Just, please, you can have one. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't have to send me one. You, uh, we'll see each other here in Munich. <laughs> cool. I, I, I hope there'll be some people in Munich because uh, I think we're playing in a place called the Passinger Fabric. Yes. It's, and uh, it looks it's, good. It's bigger. It's bigger than the Glockenbach Werkstatt where you played last okay. time. Um, and but but yeah, I will. I'll bring all my friends. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you have thousands of them then. <laughs> I, I I do, but not all of them are in Munich. <laughs> 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 Only a small part. <laughs> um, okay, cool. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah, it's uh I really can't wait for people to listen to it. I, I can't wait for to to show other people this crazy music that um touched me so much and and just yesterday I was I was recording an episode that, like the previous episode that's that's going to come out the, the uh, week before this one uh okay. with a uh, with a, also a young new uh UK band called Giant Walker. Um, who are also, who just uh, are releasing their debut album All in Good Time right now, and um, they, I I already talked about <laughs> Gerald on that episode because they um, in their bio they had um, they had this um, thought um, about when when they talked in their bio about um, composing and recording their debut album it it. Uh, it was very much for them also about um yeah music that helps you through tough times and so that kind of was yeah brought brought everything full circle and um there's there's a lot of amazing music coming up right now i i i really can't keep up but but yeah i'll try to to pick out my favorites and 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 try to get them on the prog talks here. Um, is there? Is there? <laughs> yeah, I, I I really hope that you 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 also might uh, for those who are not able to attend one of your shows because they are not uh, in Europe or close to to a place where you're playing, maybe maybe you will be able to to also uh put some more live videos on youtube or something from 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 some of the new tracks um i think that would be really great for people to yeah, cool. to to um get an idea a glimpse into what gerald is about what gerald live intensity is all about <laughs> well you see i don't I, i don't know if you um took the time to view the live session that we released last year which is called fire in a madhouse which is the uh third and fourth track on the album that literally was a raw recording we did the, like we, we did the 14 minute stint in two takes two or three takes wow. so as, as soon as like someone fucked up at some point we started from the beginning <laughs> and uh, I think that does transcribe 
a fair image and like mental image of what the project is. It, of course, it's through a computer, but coming back to the idea of releasing like live sessions, we're we're quite picky and annoying with the idea of like what we put forward. I'm not very keen on showing my face in like through media. So we're, um, we're, we're, we're lucky that you agreed to do this video. <laughs> yeah, of course. I, I'm not pretending to be a celebrity, but it's just I, I prefer us. Like we've got a lot more things to show, like the, the animated teaser that you saw. That is something that I would love us to spend time developing. Mm -hmm. And I mean, our faces, we can show them all the time, but the time that it takes to make an animated film, I'd rather us do that. And uh, it's funny you said the um, music helping you getting through rough times. Like we often, I think we made when we were making the lost tapes, we actually came to the conclusion that uh, if we can make music that corresponds to all of like levels, like personal level, common level, and just all of the spheres together. I mean, I think playing music helps me avoid going to see a psychiatrist. Sometimes I'm pretty sure that it does have very beneficial quasi-spiritual effect sometimes and just like communicating with people in a non-verbal way that is the best medicine i think so yeah i fully understand what like they said about their album the english group you're talking about yeah the, i i just remembered that i uh, wrote down one one more band that i wanted to mention um that uh, harking back to the punk attitude that we mentioned in the in the middle of the video um the it, it is a, it is another french band and they're called lotus titan and um i'm gonna have a look right now lotus they, titan yes it is um like poetry with uh improvised punk avant-garde music somehow and it's so incredibly tight, even though it is somehow improvised. <laughs> I don't know. It's very, very unique. They they released their debut album, I think, also two years ago, um, not that long ago. And 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 that has a, a kind of similar punky attitude in 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 terms of energy, in terms of intensity, and um, there is a chaotic feel about it yet it's very very precise yeah, and okay. and and tight like, yeah. like the 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 interplay of the inst instruments especially with the drums mm -hmm. um and that is that is something um i think is a lot harder to achieve than if you have your like like if you have your um composed music and yeah. you rehearse it to a click and mm -hmm. then you're 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 very professional about it and and play it note for note exactly like on record um of course it it also requires a lot of skill to play a dream theater song or whatever um <laughs> yeah but um reproducing something that's been recorded tends to deprive of energy i, I mean I don't know. I think we're like for us in any case, two distinct things. That is one recording, grasping the raw energy and then playing something that is the same song, but will never be the same song at the same time. If, if that makes sense. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, maybe, maybe one last question about the, about the lost tapes. Then, um, as you said, you, you recorded and it yourselves and, and, and also uh, it's, 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 it's everything made by the band. Did you, did you record it live? Like all of you at the same time, or did you have um, some, some, some individual sessions? Well, due to the obvious Corona shitstorm happenings, uh, the album was delayed by two years. We came to tour in Germany in 2019, and I think that by September, October, we we could have been ready to record in like that year. But then we were like starting to prepare for the next tour, which was two years ago in 2020. That was cancelled. Maha had a, a car accident. Like then last year, same like same thing happened over and over again. So Fire in a Madhouse was recorded live with all of us. 
there was some overdubbing at some point and the new bass player arrived just when we finished recording the thing so he like he'd done all of the bass lines again and the other songs I don't know if you, I, I, I presume you, you listen to Mr. Sophistication, yeah? The whole album, yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. Well, Mr. Sophistication is purely sound collage. Mm -hmm. So no recording was necessary for that. Sorry. Um, Rascal's Crime and Waterfront were recorded together. And that was drums. Yeah, we did drums and... Uh, The bass for the two songs and the interlude in between the two parts of Waterfront, like the, the grand guitar soundscape thing that was done on the same date as Waterfront for drums and Rascal for drums. <laughs> All right. Yeah, this is book ending the, the, the record. Mm -hmm. Once again, I can't wait for people to hear the lost tapes. I'm very, very happy that they have been found. <laughs> <laughs> uh thank you so much teddy for uh for the glimpse into the the, the world of gerald um thank can't you for having can't, can't wait to 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 see you live in munich uh very very soon that that's it for today for this episode of the prog talks once again don't forget to to like and subscribe to uh, to every every gerald uh channel we will link them everywhere in the description as always Same, yes. for, same for our proc space channels and uh, one last reminder of that for the cup of tea <laughs> coffee as you know it helps us out a lot thanks for listening until next time take care of yourselves and keep spreading that punky prog love the prog talks produced by the prog space Main host, Rune Belsvik Reynos. Produced by Rune Belsvik Reynos, Vanessa and Matthias Kirsch. All graphics and animations by Vanessa Kirsch. Intro theme by Giuseppe Negri. Outro theme by Zach Munoviz. This was the Prog Talks by the Prog Space. See you in a week. <laughs>